Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here to at the 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness in the geyser blue, an exclusive color to the wilderness trim levels. So aesthetically, it's definitely a little bit different than your standard Forester. You get a different front end, different front bumper, you get increased ground clearance. It's the most off-road oriented Forester they've ever made. So initially, one of the first things you know, especially on the lighter color vehicles, you get that matte black hood decal decal sticker whatever you want to call it this is matte black so that it reduces sun glare on the driver especially when you're ascending something looking up and the sun's bouncing off your hood it does make a big difference that unique front end matte black textured grill different wings off to the side than the standard ones they lead into the same headlights as the standard forester those smaller led steering responsive headlights super bright we get cladding along the bottom of the bumper including this piece here with our six LED Gatling gun style fog lights, very, very bright forward facing fog lights underneath here. Skid plate, get your tow hook removal place for when you're recovering other people. The Subarus clearly don't ever get stuck on the side here. Very, very aggressive looking. It's that boxy SUV style. That geyser blue paint looks absolutely fantastic. We get more aggressive. Fender flares, wheel arches, whatever you want to call them, they are that textured. We got 17 inch exclusive matte black alloy wheels, and you've got Yokohama Geolander AT tires. So these are a more aggressive tire. They are winter rated. You get the three peak mountain snowflake. Not as aggressive as some all terrains, but definitely more aggressive than your standard all season. You've got lots of cladding along the bottom, more cladding along the bottom with anodized copper. Forester badge than your standard Foresters, and that protects against rock chips, mud, things being flung up by the tires. But yeah, look at that, that boxy SUV styling. We've got our Wilderness badge just ahead of the mirror. You've got one on each side and one on the rear hatch. Mirror caps are not painted. They're this black cladding texture. Same thing as your fender flares. Up top here, we have our anodized copper tie-down location. So difference with the Wilderness roof rack, on the standard foresters, this is not a hole. This is just a solid piece. This is an extra tie down. These bars are also much thicker than your standard forester crossbars. So you have to use the aftermarket Thule crossbars with these, the higher weight capacity. Matte black, or sorry, matte black, gloss black painted shark fin antenna. You end up with a body color spoiler. Different than the standard foresters. These are all matte metallic black painted spoilers on the others. Fuel door is on the passenger side. If door driver door is unlocked, this is unlocked and it pops open. When you lock it, little pin shoots out there, locks in that hole, and it's secured. So when I click lock here, you can see that pin shoots out. Unlocked. There you go. Now, right underneath the painted spoiler, we have black textured cladding, and it goes all along the back between the taillights. It's like the Sport Forester with the gloss black, except this is obviously textured. So that's a little bit different on the Wilderness. This three rear three-quarter view, great view, and it really, the rear end really accentuates that boxy SUV styling. At the back, we have blacked out badging with your Wilderness badge, Subaru full-time symmetrical drive in black. Give you that full look. An aggressive looking rear end, Bumper step pad is standard equipment from the factory on the 23 and 24 Forester Wildernesses. We get backup sensors in the rear bumper. That's what those little circles are. And they'll actually apply the brakes if you think you're going to hit something in reverse between speeds of 1 and 15 kilometers an hour. Terrifying when it works, but it does work well. Two-inch receiver with four-pin wiring. So if you're going to tow anything, this Forester has a tow rating of 3,000 pounds max capacity. Or, you know, you put a bike rack in there like lots of people do. Now... In the rear, it is a power lift gate. I can do it from the key fob, I can do it from the door, or I can do it from the driver's seat. So it's a press and hold. And there's tons of room in the rear of the Forester. That big boxy square rear end leads itself to tons of storage. Privacy cover, standard equipment. Hides everything from the top of the seats down. This piece is adjustable here. And the reason that's adjustable is that these seats can be reclined, and if this bar was all the way back here, they'd recline into the bar and you couldn't re actually recline them. So functionality. Cargo tray standard. Okay. Grocery bag hooks on either side, along with a 12-volt power point, should you need it. We've got hard mount physical tie-downs. 
in each corner, makes it easier to secure awkward cargo. Underneath the cargo tray, false floor, we've got a place to put the cargo tray, uh, cargo tonneau cover. And underneath here, we have our full size tire on a matching alloy wheel. So you can do five tire rotations. You've got your eye bolt for recovering other vehicles. You've got your jack. If you ever need to change your tire, everything's easily accessible. And we do have an LED cargo light in the hatch of the Forester with a hook. And we do have these additional hooks here and here. Now I probably wouldn't hang anything from those while I'm driving because it would obscure my rearward visibility, but it is handy to have additional storage. Now to close it, I can close it. I can close it with a button. I can click and that will close and lock. So you don't have, the idea behind that is I don't have to fish my keys out of my pocket or my bag or walk back up front to lock everything. I'm not gonna do that. If I pull down, it starts to power assist. So very, very handy. Multitude of ways to open and close it. Second row, <laughs> you got lots of room. Absolutely fantastic headroom and legroom. I actually find that the Forester has the most second row room out of all of the vehicles that Subaru produces, even the Ascent. I feel I have more room in the second row and I'm a larger guy. Great headroom. This is StarTech soft touch all weather seating upholstery. So it's not cloth, it's not leather, it's a synthetic material, it's non-perforated, it's 20% recycled plastic. But the idea is you can get this wet, dirty, go home, wipe it off. Super easy to use. Got fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. On the backs of both front seats, we have three pockets for storage. We've got two USBs and vents out of the center console, in addition to the vents underneath each front seat. So the second row does heat up and cool down rather effectively. You get the high wall rubber floor mats as a standard with the wilderness. Easy access to the latch system if you're taking any children with you in car seats easy to use and then to recline it. And this is harder to do one-handed than you'd imagine, but you pull on this and you could, I'm going to have to use my elbow for this, but pull and then push. And you can see it reclines a decent amount. And then you just pull that and it goes back up. These do fold virtually flat. And this isn't rubberized like a cargo tray. And it's not the same material as the seat surfaces themselves but this is definitely a rubberized material and pet and dog hair shouldn't worm its way in there quite as easily it is easy to wipe down this is a functional vehicle easy to latch back up this is textured and is designed to be a step if you're loading anything on your roof rails and the idea is if you're standing on that you're essentially right in the middle of the roof rail a lot better than standing on the tire because one the tire sits inside the fender two if i'm standing on the tire I'm right at the back of the roof rail. So I'd be leaning over this way, perhaps putting myself in a precarious situation. Door card is soft touch, wilderness badge, soft touch armrest, more copper contrast stitching. And we do have a little bit of storage with a bottle holder, child locks if you need them. With it being a proximity key, in order to lock it, the key just needs to be within 46 inches. So I've got it in my pocket. All I do is I touch these lines. It beeps and locks. I simply wait a second, put my hand in the handle, and it unlocks. Easy to use. We do still have a key in the door handle, so if you do ever manage to have your key fob battery die, there's a key in the fob. I do have a video showing how to use that if you're curious. It is earlier on my channel. I've had a couple of people need to use that in the past. Now, on the inside here, front door card looks very, very similar that to that of the rear door card. Soft touch. Badge, soft touch armrest, anodized copper stitching. We've got window lock. We've got four power windows. We have our power mirror adjustment. This cladding texture on the interior kind of ties the outside to the inside. A little bit more storage along with a bottle holder. And we do have this warning about the rear diff temp light. So they're saying don't drive it super aggressively. And if the light comes on, let it cool down. Front seats, same seating material that in the rear. The StarTex, we've just got wilderness embossed on the headrest. Very, very comfortable seats. I love the StarTech seating material. I find it very comfortable. And of course, it is a power driver seat on the wilderness. Now let's hop inside. So here I am on the inside of the 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness. It is push button start. So keys in my pocket, foot's on the brake, light goes green, green means go. Everything comes to life. By my left knee, there's a few buttons here. So top left allows you to open the rear hatch. SRH off, that allows you to turn off the steering responsive headlight. So if you don't like the headlight swiveling left or right at speed, you can stop that. 
It is a fantastic feature. I can't think of why you'd want to turn that off. You have the ability to set it so the hatch doesn't open all the way. If you live in an underground parking garage or have limited height with where you're parking, that's very handy. Scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges. Traction control you can turn off. Auto start stop you can turn off. And blind spot detection I can turn off. That also turns off your automatic emergency steering and your cross traffic alert. So blind spot detection looks like so on the corresponding side when someone's in your blind spot. Doesn't eliminate shoulder checking, but it is absolutely fantastic. Now, steering wheel itself, we've got this anodized copper piece, anodized copper stitching. It ties it all together, and I don't think this is overkill. Uh, there, if it was like bright red or neon green, I think that may be overkill, but in this application, I don't believe it is. Left-hand side of the steering wheel, we have our Bluetooth and audio controls. You can make and take calls, control the volume of the calls and the music. So volume, source switches from AM to FM to satellite to USB, etc. That allows you to accept a phone call or issue a voice command, hang up or decline, switch between presets. These arrows down here will change our small little center display. So we've got our digital speedometer. We've got how long it shut off at intersections for the start stop, change settings, fuel economy for trip A, trip B, how long it's been running, how long you've, or how far you've traveled. We've got paddle shifters, downshift and upshift. So if you want to manually select your own gear, you can do that. Now, what I do like with the Subarus is it defaults to auto. If you want to turn your headlights off, you actually have to try. It defaults to auto. There's so many people driving around at night without their headlights on, or even at dusk, this is hugely beneficial. Right-hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. So both of these systems use these two black boxes here. Those are Subaru's EyeSight cameras, and they're always looking for road lines, pedestrians, cyclists, vehicles. It's absolutely fantastic. So when I turn on the cruise, I get an image of the Forester, and there's four bars ahead of it, all the way down to one. That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you will follow at if you catch up while using cruise. So if you're going 100 kilometers an hour and you catch up to someone and you've got four bars, you'll slow down and you'll follow them at roughly 150 to 180 feet. It's fantastic. Lane centering works above 60 kilometers an hour. I turn that on, you get that little image of the steering wheel to the right, and you'll notice that those gray lines are now illuminated. Above 60 kilometers an hour, if those boxes can see the road lines, it will illuminate white on the corresponding side, and it will actually give you gentle steering input to help keep you centered in your lane. It's fantastic. Great for a second half long day of driving. I didn't think I would be a fan of it. It's pretty spectacular. We've got Sport Sharp and Intelligent Drive Modes. Intelligent is for normal, everyday driving. Sport Sharp, go faster, sooner. Race car mode. And you'll notice that pink line is definitely a little bit more aggressive than the blue Intelligent line. You sit at a higher RPMs, you go faster, sooner, use a little bit more fuel. It's a little bit more spirited driving, but it is fun. All important, heated steering wheel. Now it is important to note, it is not the whole wheel. It does not heat between the seams. It just keeps your hands nice and toasty where you're supposed to keep them. They, they get cooking. Now, this info button will change our small little display up here, which is also, also shows us some of our cruise stuff. But each time I press the info button, it changes. It gives you different info depending what you want to look at. Lots of people like to see what driving tech is on. That's your off-road screen, your gauges. It's also our climate control displays. And it ranges from 30 on the high side all the way down. I'm just adjusting the passenger side to 15. Freezing to tropical. You can sync it back to just driver controlled. You can see your fan strength. You can see where your airflow is being directed. Really, really easy to use. And you always have your clock and you always have your outside temperature. Below that, eight inch infotainment screen. I had opened that shade on the sunroof. I'm going to close that. Touchscreen, or we have physical buttons below. So phone, apps, you've got wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle's registered in your name. Call for roadside, concierge service. You can book your own service appointments. Media is Bluetooth, aux, USB. They've gotten rid of the CD player for 24, unfortunately. It used to go there. Put it in reverse. Backup camera pops up. Rear assist braking is on. Parking sensor is on. You can see the top of the bumper so you can see where you're going to end up. And those orange lines move and show you where you're going to end up if you keep the wheels turned like that. Now, I can clean the backup camera by twisting and holding this end of the wiper stock towards myself. I'm not going to do that. This just got clean. I don't want washer fluid all over the back of the car. Still have a physical volume and tuning knob. Below that, we do have our climate control. So the dial on the left, that is driver side temperature, passenger side temperature, fan strength, mode changes where airflow is being directed. Sync means that both the driver and passenger side are synced together. So it's driver controlled. That's our heated mirrors, back window and windshield wiper de-icer. So where the wipers sit on the windshield, there's a heating element. Keeps them ice free. It is fantastic. Four-way flashers if you ever need those. 
I actually needed those earlier today. I was driving a Kia and it died on me. Not in the middle of an intersection, but just about. AC. So AC versus max AC. AC helps move moisture around. Max AC is the cold stuff. So if this comes on in the winter when you're heating up your car, remote starting it, whatever, don't turn it off. It's doing its job. Below that, we have two USBs, an aux, and a 12 volt. And this is rubberized and is designed to hopefully stop things from sliding around. We do have a little light in there. If when your headlights are turned on, that'll light up and it gives it a little bit of illumination. It is an automatic CVT, anodized copper, anodized copper on the shift boot, pull it towards yourself and you have manual mode where you use the paddles to manually select your gear. We have our park brake foot on the brake and push down to deactivate it. If I have it on and my foot is not on the brake, it doesn't go off. And on the dash, it does tell me to press the brake pedal. So foot on the brake, down. AVH is a brake holder for construction drive through a rush hour traffic. View does our front camera. So this is an off or <laughs> an off-road, a wilderness exclusive feature. Front camera is fantastic. It's great for parking lots. It's great for off-road use. It's got a multitude of uses. We do also have heated seats, high and low for both driver and passenger. With the StarTex, that is nice. If you leave these heated seats turned on and you remote start it, they will turn on as well. Dual function X mode and the Wilderness gets a special mode. So this is like 4x4 low on a pickup. Going under 20 kilometers an hour, I twist to the left. X mode pops up. And you can see right beside the park, there's a rough terrain icon, downhill descent control icon, and up top here, it takes us to the off-road screen. Shows our pitch and tilt, pitch and roll, twist to the right, deep snow and mud, deep snow and mud also turns off the traction control to allow for excess wheel spin. Now, that works up to 40 kilometers an hour. After that, it kicks off. It'll re-engage on the wilderness if you drop below, I believe it's 35 kilometers an hour. If you're driving down the highway and at 100 and someone twists it, nothing bad's going to happen. It's going to go beep, beep and say, hey, I can't do that. We have two cup holders and a little bit of storage on the armrest, anodized copper. This is soft touch, by the way. And inside, kind of dark. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. There is a 12 volt outlet in there, place to run cords through so you don't crush your cords when the armrest is closed. We have an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link buttons. So I can hook up a garage door to this without having, well, I need the opener initially, but I don't have to keep it with me. It's fantastic. I absolutely love the home link system and there's no switch. I love the auto dimming rear view mirror. Built in compass. Up top, we have a few buttons. We've got lane sway. So this is going to beep at us if we cross lines without signaling. This is our automatic emergency braking. Again, both of these systems use the iSight camera boxes. That saves you 10% on your basic insurance here in BC. SOS and roadside slash concierge. That's part of the three-year trial to the connected services. LED map lights. We've got sunglass storage. It is a manual shade for the sunroof and it is a panoramic style. So uh, it does extend into the second row. It lets a lot of light in. And on the visors, we have card holders. We've got vanity mirrors with lights and we have an extender if the sun's directly at our left and right. So that is a quick look at the 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness in the geyser blue. Absolutely fantastic trim level. Probably the most popular trim level of Forester that we get. And the highest in demand. We do have Ella. We don't get as many of these as we'd like. But absolutely fantastic vehicles. Thanks for watching my quick walkthrough of this 2024 Subaru Forester Wilderness in the Geyser Blue. If you guys have any questions about this vehicle, any of the vehicles in our lineup, any of the tech or anything like that, please put it in the comments below. I'm always looking to answer you guys' questions. Maybe you'll answer. Ask something that I don't have the answer to and I get to go learn something. If you've watched this video, you learned something, got some value out of it, please consider liking the video, subscribing, leaving me a Google review. I do appreciate all that. Again, I'm Tyson, the Super Specialist from Super Print Storage. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.